Hello and welcome to History for Today. We are going to be sitting down to dinner at the Tudor dining table. If you love history and all things about history, people, places and things, make sure you hit the subscribe button because that's what we do here. Alright, let's get ready to go to dinner. I think it is only natural that we start with the most interesting thing, which is the cockentrice. This was served up to Henry VII as a way to try and impress him by his cooks. What it is, is a rooster who has been castrated that is sewed on to a pig, which is very, very strange. And it was some, to pretend it was some kind of mythical creature of a pig and a rooster. I don't know why they chose those two animals to sew together. I'm not even sure how they quite did it, really. Um, but that's what they did. And if they were really trying to impress a dinner party or a banquet, they would add on extra body parts of other animals. For example, they might put on claws of bears, bear's claws, or they might put on antlers, deer antlers. And I can only imagine how impressive this strange mythical beast would be when you came to the dinner table or at a banquet and you saw this contraption or this I don't even know what how you would explain it but it would definitely be a centerpiece but yeah this cock and trice was definitely one for the books and I would be very impressed if I went to dinner at the Tudor court and this was served up for me at a dinner table next we have one of Catherine of Aragon Henry VIII's first wife's favorite dishes which is a porpoise one of those big, cute marine animals that look a bit like a dolphin. This was one of her favourite dishes that she loved to have um, for dinner or when she was entertaining. It was used widely because it was an abundant supply and it was huge and it could feed a lot of people and it was quite impressive. I mean, I would be very impressed to see a porpoise on the table. But not only did Henry VIII have porpoises at his dinner table, he also had dolphins. I don't know how I feel about that. Dolphins are adorable and cute and I can't even imagine eating one on the table. I'd be interested to know what they think of the food that we eat. Um, I can understand why they might eat dolphins because I mean they're still marine animals. You go fishing and you get fish. Why not get a dolphin just for meat as well? I think with our modern eyes we, can, we think oh my goodness that is just insane. Why would they do that? But these are different times, so dolphin and porpoises on the dinner table were a common thing and quite tasty probably. I don't know. Do dolphin, do marine animals, like the mammals, do they taste like fish? Or do they taste more like chicken, like apparently everything else does? This next one is actually really interesting. On Fridays, back in Tudor times, they didn't eat meat. Very much like how on Good Friday, these days that we don't eat meat um, and we usually eat fish. And that was what happened in the Tudor times as well. They used to just eat fish on Fridays. But one of the favorite fishy meals for Fridays was beaver tails. You may say, uh, I'm pretty sure beavers are mammals and you would be right. They're actually one of the biggest rodents in North America. And rodents, I kind of think of rats and stuff, but apparently beavers are rodents as well. But they were very common to be eaten on Fridays because the Tudors thought that they were more fish-like than animal-like. So that was a good way for them to get around the no eating meat on Friday's rule. If you don't have a good stomach, now might be the time to skip ahead because the Tudors ate every part of the animal. There was nothing left by the time that they were finished with it. They would eat the brains, the innards, the organs, the intestines, every single last bit. They would often fry it up and they would eat it that way or they might uh, put it in a brine and vinegar to preserve it. They were also known for mixing it together and stuffing it into other meats. So they might stuff some pig intestines into a chicken and eat it like that. They like to mix their meat flavors, I think, a lot. Even the udders of cows were not off limits. Like I said, everything got eaten. I can appreciate and respect that, that they didn't want to waste any part of the animal. I will probably not be a person that would be eating the intestines of a goat. But they were those kind of people. I am glad that I live right now. This next one is quite spectacular. Peacocks. Peacocks on the Tudor dining table. I think peacocks are one of the most amazing and beautiful birds. And I just absolutely love going to the park and seeing them waltzing around with their massive feathers. 
they are just absolutely stunning. So what they used to do, what the cooks used to do with the peacocks for the dinner table was they would carefully, very carefully pluck out all of those beautiful, beautiful feathers and they would lay those feathers to the side and then they would roast the peacock and then they would put the peacock on the table and they would reassemble the peacock, so to speak, and they would place all the feathers, all the beautiful feathers back in him and so that he would be beautiful and gorgeous on the table. And then just to add a little bit more finesse to this beautiful peacock, they would paint the, pe the beak with gold. So he would be looking very, very, very royal and beautiful. It might creep me out a little bit, I think, actually, if I were to go and see this cooked peacock with his beautiful feathers and to eat it. I think I'd rather just like minus the feathers, like less peacock looking, yeah. That's how I would like to eat a peacock. The amount of food that they went through, especially in King Henry VIII's house, was absolutely astounding. After King Henry VIII died, they did an inventory for his daughter, the future Queen Elizabeth's house, and all the food that they needed to be able to supply everybody with enough food and drink to eat for an entire year. And the amount of food was absolutely mind-boggling. I will read it because I am not going to remember the numbers, but it's absolutely crazy. The amount of food required to feed the then Princess Elizabeth was 1,240 oxen, 8,200 sheep, 2,330 deer, 760 calves, 1,870 pigs, and 53 wild boars. Back in Tudor times, the diet consisted of mainly meat protein. 80% of their diet was meat, and the other 20% were, I guess, vegetables that were, you know, token amounts of vegetables. Like when you have some salad. When kids put salad on their plate, they put like a couple of leaves, and that's their token amount of salad. So I think it was very similar in Tudor times when it came to vegetables. They would have a big plate of meat and maybe they'll just chuck a couple of vegetables on just to make it look pretty. Um, vegetables were actually used to make the meal and the table look a lot more glamorous and... Back in those medieval times, the water was also quite polluted and if you drank it, you were very likely to become sick. So the obvious answer to that was to drink a lot of mead and ale. It is no wonder why they didn't make very wise decisions back then. They were all probably quite drunk. Some historians have actually predicted how much ale and wine they used to drink and I will read you those. At one point historians estimated that in the course of one year at Hampton Court Palace, Henry VIII's home would go through an astounding 600,000 gallons of ale which is enough to fill an Olympic sized swimming pool along with 75 gallons of wine which is enough to fill 1500 bathtubs. Meals at the Tudor Court were not just about eating. They were a sign of power. They're a way to display that you are rich and um, the, food, the spices that you used, if they came from far away exotic places, oh my goodness, you were just, oh wow, you're so fancy. You must have a lot of money. You must be so powerful. So it was definitely a show of authority and power. Um, where you sat for dinner also symbolized where you were in the hierarchy. The closer you sat to the king, the higher up you were. I would love to know what you found most interesting that was on the Tudor table. For me, it was definitely the cockatrice and probably the dolphin. I think those were very interesting. Definitely the cockatrice, especially if it had all those weird body parts from different animals, like some kind of Frankenstein animal dinner. Um, make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you thought and I will see you back here next time where we go and visit the Tower of London and its most famous prisoners.